So I gotta sit up, sit up, cause you ain't gonna let up. Katie Moon is just a few weeks removed from winning a silver medal in the women's pole vault at the Paris Olympics. She took gold three years ago at the Tokyo Games and is currently ranked second in the world in the event and has won the world championships the past two years. She was the NCAA champion and a state champion in high school. Katie is married to Hugo Moon, a University of Tulsa rowing coach, and as a Christian woman carries that faith with her to every competition. I started our conversation by asking her about early life in the Cleveland, Ohio area. Gosh, it was it was great. I mean, really, I have I just don't have any complaints. We were so so fortunate and my parents were so incredibly supportive. I we grew up in Olmstead Township, which is a small suburb of Cleveland, and it was yeah, I middle class, like I really never wanted for anything uh my don't get me wrong we had our hardships my dad's company went under and there was definitely a a shift in uh you know what, how many times we'd go out to dinner and things like that but i mean my parents just always made me feel so loved and supported my dad was i say this all the time my biggest fan he found my pole vault club he um he just really embraced at, any sport that I wanted to do and would find me clubs and clinics and private lessons. And, um, he passed when I was 16. And so that was, that was tough. Um, but my family really just came together, even my extended family in a way that I am so grateful for because I've heard horror stories of a parent passing and then their siblings or their parents or you know just it it gets really tumultuous and my whole extended family just really came around us my mom's an absolute rock star and just kept going and showed us how to keep going when things get tough and so I think I owe a lot of my uh I guess my continuing to get up when things get tough to her um Mm -hmm. she really just was the example for that so yeah. Any siblings? Two siblings, brother and sister. Okay. I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Uh, yep. All right. So how many years in between you and them? Me and my sister are 16 months apart. Okay. And then my brother is, he was born in 96 and I was 91. So five, five okay. years. But so we're all pretty close in age. And I would say now, especially we're very close. Um, that I just, after the Olympics, we went to... Bordeaux to get away and just get just have us on vacation together it was awesome so how did you get into pole vaulting I saw the older kids doing it I was in seventh grade so I was 12 years old and it was the first day we could do track for our school and they took us over to the high school and I saw the older kids doing it and I had done gymnastics when I was little I had done pretty much any sport you could think of I tried but I loved adrenaline, upper body strength type sports. And Mm -hmm. I just begged the coaches for days to let me go try it. And I think they didn't want to deal with pole vaulters at that time because it's, we're a lot, we're high maintenance. It's just a difficult sport and it's, we have to carry poles to competitions and it's just, it's a lot. So what year would that have been? It was 2004. 2004. Cause I'm trying to I'm trying to piece in my mind, you know, I'm 63 years old. <laughs> I mean, there haven't been you look female amazing. Po- well, thank you. <laughs> there haven't been female pole vaulters. No. In, you know, f- for a long time, I'm trying to think of when that really started to gather momentum. Obviously, it was at least 2004, if not earlier. 2000 was the first year it was an event in wow. the Olympics. I think they had had an exhibition in 1996. Now, did you have it on a high school level a- at the time in 2000 and Four. Yes. I, the year before me, one or I think there was a middle school girl that had tried it. And then there were, there were a couple girl high schoolers jumping for my high school. Okay. And so it, thankfully I didn't have to totally, you know, pave the way, but it was, it was definitely new and mm-hmm. exciting. So are you an adrenaline junkie of to, to an extent, to a degree? when I was younger, for sure. I mean, you na- I broke my wrist flipping off a regulation size soccer goal. <laughs> like I, 
I loved anything. I was skiing and snowboarding and just, I, my dad was a big golfer and I love golf now, but when I was younger, it just didn't have enough adrenaline in it Mm -hmm. for me to stay patient and calm. (laughs) So I, but yes, I, growing up, I absolutely was. So were there any, because I see the stories about uh, young kids who started a sport and said, I'm going to be in the Olympics someday. Is there a Katie Moon story related to wanting to be in the Olympics as a young girl? I mean, I, we always watched the Olympics. My favorite vacation was actually in the year 2000, what year is it? Oh, 2002, when the, when the Winter Olympics were going on and we took a family vacation to Steamboat, Colorado. So we would ski all day and then come in and watch mm-hmm. the, watch the, winter sports and it was one of my favorite vacations of all time it was so much fun and I I always knew that I wanted to be a professional athlete I just didn't know in what I remember writing down in middle school we have like those time capsule things I wrote down that I wanted to be a professional basketball player I didn't like basketball that much I (laughs) didn't I wasn't very good at it because of the amount of endurance it required and running constantly um, but I didn't know of any other sports that I could go pro in, and it was less running than soccer, so mm-hmm. I <laughs> chose that. Um, I, yeah, it's hard to say. I don't know that I had a moment with the Olympics where I said I have to do that, but I I always wanted to be a part of sports at at, at an adult age yeah. and just as long as I possibly could be. So given you're a world-class athlete, <laughs> generally speaking, those people were also pretty good at something else. And even though you say, yeah, basketball wasn't a driving (laughs) sport, were you you pretty good at basketball? I was okay. I was making teams in middle school, but I wasn't, I I wasn't necessarily like starting lineup. Um, Same with, I was always athletic enough to make whichever team I was trying out for, Mm. but I wasn't necessarily the superstar of it. Um, And I think I really just found my calling in the individual sports. Uh, Mm -hmm. I was definitely better at diving, golf, pole vault, you know, track and field. So I think those were kind of my, my events. (laughs) So were you, were you always, I mean, everybody has to get good at something and, and, and you have to reach a certain level of competence in it to want to continue to do it. Right. Did you find yourself doing really well at an early age in pole vault? Yes, I was definitely, I I was doing very well at every level. And I always had coaches that I could tell were giving me a bit of extra attention or just telling me how much potential I have in this sport. Mm -hmm. And I, but what's cool is that it really took me until the end of whatever stage I was at to reach the pinnacle, I did still have to really work. So it took until my senior year of high school to win the state meet. It took me until my senior year of college to win nationals. It took me five years out of college to jump 16 feet and get a contract and make my first team. And so it just, and then, you know, another four, three, four years after that, making my first Olympic team. So it, it was nice because I had the potential, but it, I did have to really work at every level. Mm -hmm. And I think that did help kind of teach me work ethic, maybe not immediately, but eventually. (laughs) So growing up, was it a church on Sunday thing with your family? My dad was Catholic. My mom grew up Russian Orthodox. So we were baptized Catholic and we would go to church most Sundays. Um, I'll be honest. I found Catholic church very boring. (laughs) Like as a kid, it just... It wasn't very fun, I but I would go to youth ministry, uh, which was just our child. Like at, in high school, it was, a, you know, mm. we would get together on, I think it was Sunday nights. That was very fun for me because it was, we were talking about obviously the word and, and the important things, but it was hanging out with my friends. And so it got to combine the two. But I'll be honest, throughout, I would say once I went to college, I kind of lost faith a little bit um I think going growing up it was more 
okay, this is just what we did, but I don't know that I really felt it on a deep level. But then when I started working with my current coach, so just a little bit of backstory, my I out of college, I started working with a coach in Knoxville, Tennessee. He was great, but I just wasn't quite ready to be all in. I worked with him for a few years. I ended up moving back to Ohio, still worked with him, tried out for the Olympic team in 2016, had a great day, but didn't make the team. And that was the first time that I had wanted something out of a competition, had a great day and did not get it. And that was very humbling. And I realized, okay, I need to find a totally new situation because I have potential to be better, but I'm not doing that with what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I moved to work with my current coach, Brad Walker. And Brad is somebody that is so just, he's, he's Christian and he's so firm in his faith and unwavering. And just, it was really I'd never met someone like that. I'd always met people that were just good Christian people, but just the way he was so unapologetically just so, I mean, just unwavering and very just confident in his faith. That was really cool. And so that... Well, I was going to say, would it be fair to say that he had a joy... Well, about him because of that that was also different i am gonna be honest he actually was more of the opposite which sounds <laughs> weird like some people are just so joyous and he actually kind of resonates more with the like satan is the god of this world like he's kind of angry about that but it's just so like he just sees jesus as this warrior right gotcha. that is just battling okay. and so and he, I think he's just dealt with a lot of it, but he just, he himself said that he ser- like he was always searching for something. And then when he like, when he really found Christianity and his faith, it just like clicked. And so I think for me, it was just more of just how it's, it's hard to explain Brad. He is just like this really intense person and you could just feel that intensity of his faith coming through mm-hmm. and and he's just a cool guy. Like, he, you know, he's a world champion. He's two-time Olympian. He had the American record, and he's just so loud in his faith, I guess. Yeah. And that was really cool. And so I think it just got me just wondering and, like, and, and, and interested. And then that really helped me find my faith. And I, so obviously, yes, I'm still Catholic, but I would really say I'm more Christian now yeah. than than true Catholicism. Yeah. So when did Hugo uh, come into the picture, your husband? He, we met at Washington State. He was coaching the club rowing team. Um, And so he, we just, we met through a dating app, uh, right time, right place. And that was 2018. So it was right before I kind of had my big breakthrough, which he is sure to Tell Take everybody. Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we matched one month before I had my big breakthrough, went mm-hmm. on a couple dates, and I just knew immediately he was a person that I just wanted to keep hanging out with. Like, it was, it was so interesting to me because you watch the movies, and it's very dramatic, and it's this crazy big love with all this tension, and, and with him it was just the easiest, like, puzzle piece fitting in I just never want to stop hanging out with you and Mm -hmm. it it just and we just didn't (laughs) and so how long have you been married we have been married since 2022 we got married New Year's Eve of 2022 going into 2023 okay so it's we've been together for gosh what are we at five six years now 2018 and it's 2024 Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so but we were together um but while he was at Washington State and I was there, and then when I moved to Atlanta, he moved to Gainesville, Florida. So that was 2019. And so we had a full year in the same place to realize, okay, like we we work together. Um, but so we've been distanced pretty much since 2019. He was in Gainesville, Florida, Florida rowing there, at coaching there, and then got the job at University of Tulsa. And so, yeah. Well, I appreciated Tulsa putting that post on Facebook. Yeah. Because that's what made me think, I need to get in touch with Katie Moon. Yeah. For a couple of things. <laughs> and one of them was, you know, to get you on the sports animal. 
but also to do this interview yeah. as well. So you mentioned your dad passing at 16. Mm -hmm. uh, was that the first real kind of shake in your faith moment? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a, you know, why is this happening? But there was a disconnect for a long time because he was traveling for work a lot. So I think on some levels, it just felt like he was on this extended business trip, which made it easier in some ways, but then harder because it would just hit me at different points and in different ways. And I think the older I get and the more monumental things that have happened mm -hmm. that he's not there at, it's just like, oh, crap. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it definitely, I, thankfully I still had my youth ministry group. They were wonderful. And again, my family just being so, so supportive but I think at that time, I still, like I said, there was just a, it, it was like church was just the thing we did. And I, it was really hard for me to grasp. I've always been somebody that if I can't see it and feel it, and then it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And so it just seemed a bit too big for me. So it wasn't necessarily like I was blaming God. And obviously I needed to believe he was somewhere where I would see him again. Yeah. But it, it, it was just a mix of emotions. It's, it's hard to really put into words. But I think now I, it's, it's like, okay, yeah, I think there was some shaking my faith in that. And my dad was really the one that, that was, I mean, being Catholic, he was the reason we were going to church. And my mom did a great job still taking us. Yeah. I will and I'll never forget that first um, Christmas we went to Mass <laughs> For some reason, my mom brought one Kleenex, and we passed this thing around us, like, <laughs> till it was literally disintegrating. And at one point, my mom tried to, like, brush my cheek with it because I had a tear stream, and I just I just pulled away from her so fast. Like, that thing is disgusting. I'm just going to let it flow. Like, it was just – it was pretty funny in the moment because they're like, okay, he's probably laughing <laughs> right now. But, yeah, it just it, – it's – it was obviously very tough, but it's hard to, I am a firm believer that everything happens for a reason and mm -hmm. I don't maybe always understand why, but I'm not supposed to and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And it obviously made way for whatever, you know, all of these amazing things to have happened. So who am I to be mad about it when I've mm -hmm. just received so many wonderful gifts? Was there a, a point in your relationship with your new coach and, and, seeing how he, you know, had this deep faith and this belief. Yeah. And obviously he showed you he had a relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus. Yes. And, and that is why Christianity to me is so different, you know, than, than most other faiths is yeah. because it's about that relationship that yeah. you have with Jesus and not just a religion necessarily. Yeah. Was there a moment when you felt a connection with Jesus at some point? Yeah, I think it just grew slowly. I, you know, I started going, my coach was hosting a Bible study and I would just start going there and then I would start reading more on my own. And it just, it just slowly grew. And, and I, I, I still am finding my faith. I feel like there's just still so many things that I'm learning. And I'll be honest, I don't claim to be the best Christian. I, you know, there are phases where I don't get into the word as much as I should. And then, you know, I'll, but I always try to find my way back to it because yeah. it just, it's, I think it's so easy to get distracted. Again, I, I said this before, my coach is a big proponent of it. Satan's the God of this world. It's easy to just get distracted by things. And, and, and so I, I think it really just was, yeah, there, there wasn't like one big moment. It was mm -hmm. just this gradual, like, oh, this is right. This is what, you know, I, I feel this and I, in a way, feel closer to my dad. And it just like, it really just kind of, yeah, I don't, it's hard to, I, it's hard to explain. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I get that. Yeah. And I, I also appreciate the fact that you said that it's an ongoing growth because yeah. as I mentioned at 63, almost 64, it's been that way for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning more. Uh, I just recently became an elder in our church oh, amazing. and you know, that was a big commitment for me yeah. uh, to make for our church and the people in, in that church. Um, 
but you know uh, that was a new step for me yeah. uh, to take. You know, this podcast seven years ago was a a, a new step for me to yeah. take in my faith and my relationship. But I'm listening to the Spirit and you know I'm following up on the things that I hear Him saying you need to do. Yeah, uh, and so. That would be my encouragement for you would be yeah. just keep listening, yeah. but you got to ask the spirit, you know, what do you want to be next? Yeah. And I know that that's a big thing for you because you now, you you get gold in Tokyo in 2001, you get silver recently in Paris. Right. Uh, well, the next Olympics are four years <laughs> away in yeah. Los Angeles, which is cool. Um, and so what is it right for you next? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, and I, Gosh, that's why. We... Because the, because that's still a, a possibility, right? I mean, yes. Jumping in in oh in what I guess it'd be twenty eight. Yeah, it's a ways away. I know that. Gosh, I the fact that it's in LA is so enticing. Mm-hmm. But four years, uh, and I'm thirty three. It's just it's a ways away. Four years is a long time as an athlete, where you're asking and pushing for the most out of your body. And that's, I think if anything, like that's just trusting God, I think throughout this, the, this journey and just continuing to like put it to him, obviously doing what I can control, but just always saying, you know, whatever is your plan, I'm okay with. I, I always feel bad because, you know, going into major events, your instinct is to ask for help and your instinct is to say like, please let this go. Well, please help me. But I, I always try to phrase it as, you know, please just help me feel mentally clear and healthy. And however you want this to go is fine with me. I I'll be fine with it eventually. But like, you know, just, I just, you know, when I, when I'm praying before a competition, it's just, please just help me to be clear and whatever, you know, you or whatever you want from me out of this is uh, Mm. that's okay well i think you have an awesome spirit and thanks (laughs) what i've seen of you on video even during competitions um as much as your coach is intense uh (laughs) and and i know you have a desire to win otherwise you wouldn't be doing it um but it's pretty evident that you and you're asking for god to help you be okay with whatever and it just looks like that you are. I mean, yeah. you won gold three years ago. Some people would say, oh, she only won a silver yeah. this time. Well, it's it's like, yeah, this is a silver medal in the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're the second best in the world at what you do. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to be too mad. No, I, and that's, I was going into it. I didn't know how I would feel if I didn't win because I've been so lucky and blessed to have won every major event since 2021. But I think, again, just going in knowing, you know, whatever is meant to be will be. And it was so much fun uh, just having my family and friends there. And it just, it's so much bigger than sport. It, it really is. And it's just, you know, I just, I hope that I can show that you can be just as happy winning any medal or just just being there and enjoying the process of it you know it's i'm at the olympics you know how many people dream of that i'm so so lucky that i i I say this all the time i don't know what i did to deserve this life and i'm so grateful to be good at what i love to do and just experience things that people dream about it's it's i don't always feel worthy of it but i'm just hoping that i can you know pay it forward somehow (laughs) like whether it's yeah, spreading word as I can or just, you know, inspiring the next generation and showing that yeah. you can, there's joy in every element of it, not just winning. You know, the other thing, and I was, I'm not asking you to tell me your plans here, yeah. but obviously you just mentioned your age, uh, you married. Mm-hmm. I don't know if family is yeah. in the future. Yeah, for you guys, but obviously that would make an impact on training. Definitely for any event, whether it's four years away or a year away right. or two years away. I 
I know that I would not be a good mom or pole vaulter if I was trying to do both at once. So once I have kids, I will not pole vault anymore. And I'm okay with that. I, I pole vault is so stressful to me. (laughs) I love it, but just the day to day, it scares me. I'm stressed about it way more than people probably realize. And I think that's one thing I love about it is it's kind of conquering that that fear and that anxiety every time. Mm-hmm. And my coach has done a wonderful job of minimizing that by teaching me how to think on the runway and focus and execute. Um, but I just, with how wonderful of a mom my mom was, I want to hopefully be that for my kids. And yeah, so I we don't have a set plan, but I... I will absolutely go through next year. Uh, There's a world championships in Tokyo. I have automatically qualified because I won last year in Budapest. So I will definitely do that. And then we will just see and take it year by year. And just if I'm still healthy, if I'm still enjoying it, if I'm still contending for medals, then then we keep going. But yeah, we, we would, we will, God willing, have a family at some point. That's awesome. So Kind of in conclusion here, um, if you're speaking to a young group of kids, uh, high school age, what what would you generally leave them with uh, as you are, you know, wrapping up a talk with them? Yeah, I, for me, I wish something, first of all, that's the age you fall in love with it. Do it as much as you can. Love it as much as you can because it will get to a point where it's not so fun and it sometimes does feel like a job. But at its core, just that's where you find your love of it. So do it as much as you can. Have fun. But I wish that I had learned how to, and I said this before, but think and focus on the runway the way that I do now. And what I mean by that is I was always just very blank-minded, just run down as fast as I can, throw my hands up, hope for the best, and go completely <laughs> off of adrenaline and feel. And the when my coach taught me how to actually focus, and as I'm coming in, I am telling my body exactly what I want it to do, just those one or two cues, that is how you become a better vaulter. But it's, it's hard. It's it's harder. It takes more energy. You feel exhausted at the, like it's, Mm -hmm. it requires more out of you, but it's so much more fulfilling. You get just better jumps and you are able to take that into a competition and focus that way. And then the adrenaline will lift you up as opposed to crush you and let the emotions get the better of you. So that, and then, you know, obviously with the theme of, of this, it's just, you know, I encourage everyone to to find their faith but I also know that it's one of those things you kind of have to do in your time but I hope that I can at least like my coach show young kids uh, not to sound ridiculous but that it is cool to have faith like it's and I think there sometimes is a stigma around it and it there there shouldn't be I I just I'm so I'm just so grateful and blessed and I I just Gosh, I, like I said, I don't know why I deserve what I do, but it's, you know, just I encourage you to just explore and ask questions and open a Bible and see what you find. And it's it's really every time you open it, you're going to find something new and something even the same passage, you could find a new way of looking at it. And I just I think when you find your faith, you become really grounded and just again, I, I've I'm OK with however competitions are supposed to go but it alleviates a lot of stress because it just it puts it in his hands and and that's a pretty cool cool feeling well i've become a katie moon fan <laughs> for <you>. sure <laughs> and i know a lot of people listening to this will as well and we're all, all going to follow katie Thank moon and see you. what what is the next uh, step for you Regardless, TBD. you're going. To, you're <laughs> going to be awesome at it. Thank you. Uh, and thank you so much for your time here. Thank you. My thanks to Katie Moon for being on Suit Up. If you want to hear more inspirational stories like Katie's, just go to SuitUp611.com and please give us a five star rating. So I got to suit up, suit up, cause you ain't gonna let up.